How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary of the Halo World Championship Series. Today we're going to be talking about the London Finals that just happened over the weekend and happen to notice with this video as well less glasses flare hopefully and so then you won't be able to see quote unquote the universe through my lenses. Uh, less flare would be amazing and way less distracting in this video but anyways guys so what we're going to do in this video we're going to talk about the London Finals uh, how well they did and what kind of teams kind of surprised you what kind of came up it was rather interesting some major critiques that need to happen with uh, the next presentation of the next MLG event for Halo World Championship and overall who won who's gonna move on to the Seattle finals which I was certainly looking forward to because I'm gonna be there I'm gonna be at the Seattle finals so if anyone here is watching this video and wants to go, hey, I'd love to meet this weird dude here on the internet. Well, you can find me at the Halo World Championship Finals in Seattle from uh, April 13th to the 15th. I'll be there definitely for the Saturday and Sunday events pretty much all day. Uh, so if you guys want to come check out and hang out there, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, come by. I'll be there <laughs> pretty much. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter as well, uh, link in the description, and uh, you'll be able to kind of get in contact me much more uh, easily there. But anyways, so let's get right into the topic of the video here, which is going to be the London Finals. So uh, if you guys don't know the way the finals worked, it wasn't necessarily an open like it was with uh, Orlando. This was a little bit different. This was to be the finals for. Uh, teams from Europe and the Middle East and the top four teams from those regions would go to the Seattle Finals. Moving forward, so then we had four teams qualify actually for the championship. So in first place we had Infused. Infused absolutely dominated this finals. They won every match that they played, swept almost every single game except for one which was in the finals against uh, uh, Vexed. And so, they have, other than that, they 3 0 and 4 0 every other team. So they came to freaking play, and they definitely did. They kicked a lot of butt in these, these finals. So, I uh, definitely want to keep an eye out for these guys when it comes to the finals because, you know, they just completely dominated the European and, I guess, Middle Eastern field as well. But it was pretty much, pretty much Europe. Uh, second place, we had Vexed, uh, E Buyer. Then we had Fable Sports, and then uh, Maestro. And fifth and sixth tie was Maka and Polaris Gaming. So that means we had Infused, we had Vexed, we had Fable, and uh, Maestro all going to Seattle for the finals. So we have to get a chance to look forward to that. Uh, I'd say pretty much out of those four, I did get a chance to watch a few of the streams, uh, mainly uh, just like a, little, a couple games here and there. I didn't really get a chance to watch all of them because I was pretty busy over the weekend. Uh, but um, I would say Maestro is actually a pretty solid team. They put up a good fight. All these teams were here rather good, but uh, like I said, Infused really took the cake on that one. They just completely dominated. Now I have four major critiques that ha I need to give for this uh, f uh, London Finals here. Now there's one, there's gotta be face cams when it comes to first person view. Uh, I did not realize how much I missed face cams <laughs> when these uh, competitive games until it was taken away. Cause before I actually kinda thought they were rather useless cause usually you just see a guy just like this, head down, just <laughs> like that, like the whole time pretty much. Uh, but the thing is though, you get the chance to play, put a face to the name. And a lot of times with, since uh, with the London Finals, they didn't have face cams. And so these were all just names being thrown around, like Jimbo. Uh, I remember, was that member being a name that really came to mind quite often? And that's the only one I really kind of made a face connection with. Other than that, it was just a bunch of names being thrown around. I never really kind of made, none of them really stuck to me. That's probably because there was no facial recognition with the name. So face cams definitely going to be in there with their, uh, for the next event. It's probably just because it was a European thing. I know they'll obviously be there for the finals, but anyway, so. Uh, it's my second critique, you gotta do a lot better job on the third person camera angles that they try implementing with it. It's a great idea to give you more context and you know get an overview of what the environment or how the battle's playing out. But it happens so many times where the camera is just focusing say just on like the rockets. The rockets themselves like say on uh, Coliseum and you don't get to see red ramp, you don't get to see blue ramp or anything like that, just the rockets. And then it will cut to a guy like just, you know, boosting over, grabbing it and falling off. Like it basically just like a split second, you get to see the third person camera angle. And I'm like, 
well, what was the point of that? Why not just switch that person's point of view so you get to see how he ended up, how that player ended up grabbing the rockets and what they ended up doing with them, right? And just like a quick flash of like, yep, that was third person camera angle of them doing the same thing you could have seen in first person. Uh, if you're gonna implement third person, what you really should do is time it right for whenever a power weapon's about to pop up or whenever a power up is going to you know spawn in. So then and then have it be kind of maybe like a top down or like an angled overview kind of, of the battlefield so you get a context of how many people on each team are surrounding this, how are they jockeying for position, how are other teammates working with each other to make a push for these certain power ups. That's how you use third person camera angle, not just the variation from a third person thing. Like it's if you're gonna add it, make it useful. Don't just add it just because you can. And I understand like it's really hard to time these things because you know Halo is such a fast-paced shooter, but you can do better. Like I'm seeing this, I'm like I can do better than this. I know I, I, there's just such a better way. My number three critique would be that while these commentators are talking in between matches, a lot of times we don't really care about it, and a lot of it's just kind of gibberish, really. Some people do. I like hearing about it because it kind of gives you a little more insight uh, to these teams especially if you don't know them. But one thing I think you have to have during these people are talking or when these ma certain matches are going to play. Um, you know, so then people don't just hop into the stream and go, hey, when's my favorite team playing? Or when's this team playing kind of thing. They can just see a scrolling bar in the bottom of the screen saying um, match number three uh, at this time, projected at this time kind of thing. Like obviously, Times are going to change due to the technical difficulties, which I'll get into later, or just general scheduling of how the match the game is, how the day is going to play out. So I know, oh, I need to be, you know, watching the live stream at, say, at whatever time so I can catch the finals the full time through rather than sitting there and just kind of waiting. And I know that's at, at times very, there's a variation when it comes to time because games don't always go exactly the same amount of time as every game, but you can kind of judge that out, at least give a basis within within 30 minutes you can be correct that's what i'm trying to say on that one and uh lastly the biggest thing that they needs to be changed are the connections oh my god so many disconnects happened during this finals holy crap it was absurd the amount of disconnects that were happening and I don't know if it's just an issue that the Xbox is always need to be connected to Xbox Live, or maybe their servers were crap, or something, or they're being DDoS, or something. But like, it happened so many times when I was watching where a player would get disconnected, or the game would just crash, and then they have to restart from a certain point, which is terrible for a game like Halo because momentum plays so, such a huge part. There were so many games I watched that, you know, a, disc, a team that was actually kind of an underdog was doing really well in this match. They were like, all right, we have. You know, we have a fly cap, you know, we got positioned really well, we can maybe make another capture, game drops, and then uh, the next game restarts with, you know, them having a lead of one flag, but it completely ruins the flow of the match. I have so many times where I saw then, like, the team that was winning get overthrown by the team because of just a disconnect. Like, it was, it was just a really big bummer, man. None of that happened in Orlando, which, thank God, but uh, for, Orlando, for London, man, it was... It really ruined my experience, especially was it during the finals or the semifinals where they were literally down for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes or something like that. Maybe even close to an hour, like without being able to play. Like it's absurd. It just shouldn't be happening. If you're playing, trying to make a competitive event, maybe it's something with Xbox Live, like I said, or again, DDoS or something like that. But you cannot have it be having these disconnects. It absolutely ruins the flow of the game and the enjoyment of the viewer as well. But yeah, guys, that was my recap of the uh, London Finals. Not too shabby of a game once they were actually able to play and it was plagued with disconnects. It was really a shame to see that kind of stuff happen um, but yeah they got the four teams that are qualified for the Seattle finals I'll be there like I said earlier in the video so if you guys want to know when I'll be there well it's gonna be during uh, in Seattle between April 13th to the 15th uh, follow me on Twitter It'll be the best way to know when I'm gonna be there and where I'm going to be if you want to meet up if anyone here is in Seattle and wants to come by and see me you know more power to you uh, but anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I greatly appreciate it. If you like these kind of recap videos, please make sure to tap that like button if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, leave a comment down below what you thought about the London Finals uh, and if your favorite team won or if you just were just really frustrated with all the disconnects like I was. And if you want to see some more videos like this, you can always tap the subscribe button with the bell to keep you notified every time we upload anything awesome to the channel, which is always. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.